Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to another edition of RPV City Talk. Joining me today here in studio, we have RPV's Community Development Director, Joel Rojas. Always wonderful to have you. And Senior Planner with the City, Eduardo Schaumborn, joining us together to talk about a project they're working on, and that is to improve and revitalize Western Avenue, one of the major corridors in our city. And uh, so you're here to update us. We'll just start with you, Joel, to just sort of bring our community up to speed and talk about what is so-called the Western Avenue Vision Plan, um, how this all started and what's going on. Sure, certainly, yeah. We have Western Avenue. It's a major corridor on the east side of our city. And I know the city really is known for its residential communities, its open space trails, but we do have this vital commercial corridor that we share with the city of San Pedro. And it's been for quite some time, uh, decades actually, and you know, it's starting to look a little dated. And uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's successful in terms of, of there's very few vacancies and it's very uh, busy, but I think we can do something to improve it. And so SCAG, the Southern California Association of Governments, has a grant program that they give monies towards cities to hire consultants to see where they can improve commercial areas, to try to make them more livable, uh, increase the walkability so people walk to the shops instead of drive, maybe put some bike lanes in so people use their bikes instead of driving. So because of the grant program, we thought, well, you know, Western Avenue is a great candidate. So we put in an application and we were awarded a $100,000 grant and we got a consultant, uh, a renowned national con consulting firm that has done these types of plans elsewhere. And they looked at Western Avenue and we said, look, we'll do what you can. Uh, you're an outside firm coming in to look at this. Uh, see what you can do to improve it. And so that's what we've, we've been doing. We've been working with the firm. And also they put together a working group of, of stakeholders, residents in the area, uh, commercial um, owners in the area, uh, folks from the city of LA, because it, we border the city of LA, and it's very important that they're a partner in this. And so together we've come up with a working group, um, Council and Misitich is part of the working group, and they're the kind of the group that gave ideas, the first line of ideas to the consultant of things they like, things they don't like, things they want to see improved, et cetera, et cetera. And that really helped the consultant build the basis of a plan. And of course, you're in charge of this project, this for the city. Um, Eduardo, talk about, you know, once you did get the grant and sort of the process that has been going on um, since this was awarded in 2011 and just bring us up to speed on that and just, just again, sort of like how this plan is being developed as a vision plan for Western, Ave Western Avenue. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, as, as Joel explained, uh, I, think, I think one of the benefits that we've had is, is, is having a consultant to uh, help us bring all the, all the interested parties together. And there are many stakeholders out there. Uh, the biggest one is is Caltrans. Uh, Western Avenue is is a uh, is is a Caltrans uh, right of way, so that's always been one of the uh, stumbling blocks in terms of trying to to come up with uh, ideas and uh, to implement out there to improve the street and, and the corridor out there. But uh, I I think uh, in, in terms of what we've been able to to do over the past several months uh, is is get these parties involved. Uh, get these stakeholders uh, from the business community, chambers of commerce as well, uh, and residents from both RPV and from the city of LA and San Pedro, uh, is, is to hear, hear them out and, and see what is it that, that, uh, that concerns them, what is it that, that they would like to um, see improved. And I think over the course of, of, of several months, we've met with this working group. Uh, we've had several uh, breakfast meetings with them out there. I think breakfast is probably the way to go to get people out there. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so we, we've heard their ideas and, and you know, with, the, with the aid and the assistance of the consultant, um, they're coming up with some, some, some pretty grand ideas. And, uh, and, and really, it's, it's, an over, you know, it, it's a vision for, for, for Western Avenue. It's going to be you know, these overarching goals and, and hopefully policies that uh, will help improve uh, the appearance, the aesthetics, the mobility of Western Avenue, uh, you know, and all for, to the benefit of both the city of RPV and the city of, uh, of LA and San Pedro. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the improvements that you're, you're talking about here, Joel. It's a 2.8 mile long 
corridor. Um, if you could just like sort of do a scene setter, just sort of like about the stretch of, of give us the lay of the land. It's you know very different as you travel down western mm -hmm. when you start say from Summerlin and go all the way up to Green Hills. You know, there's different issues I'm sure along the way that you're addressing. Yes, no, that's a very good point. In fact, that was one of the first things our consultant uh, pointed out that although it's a commercial corridor that at first look looks the same, it really is divided into three sections. Mm -hmm. I think um, if starting from the north part of it, where, where Green Hills is, the cemetery, and on the other side is the city of LA with the old uh, naval uh, depot. And there really isn't much activity there whatsoever. I mean, there's no, there's no people walking, there's no retail. And so that part of the, of the, of the quarter, the, the, the consultant said, well, that's where we just maybe want to just improve the visual aspects. Maybe that's where you do landscaping and maybe some art, some public art, and, and just uh, it serves as an entryway or a gateway as people are coming from uh, Lomita area into towards the toward the the beach, and so that's one part of the Western Avenue. The other part of it is the middle part where where um, the the Smart and Final is, and up until like uh, the Terrace's shopping center. That part is unique in the sense is that on the west side is RPV and it's mostly the backs of homes. And on the east side is, is L.A. and it's shopping. So that's, that's unique in a sense that one side is retail and one side is re residential. So there, I think they were trying to do something, have ideas to try to get the, the residences uh, to, to open up into the, into the streets so that maybe make it easier for them to walk to the, to the shops and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but then the, the other part of it is really the central core of Western Avenue, and that is from the, basically the terraces to Summerland, um, up to about Pe Peck Park, and that's where you have commercial on both sides, multiple shopping centers, uh, a lot of activity, a driveways, lot of a lot of congestion. <laughs> I mean, that's, Don't go when school's getting out. Oh, my there. God, yes, we know that. And I think, I mean, but that could be a plus because, right, I mean, what, what, shop, what shop owners like is, is people passing by, you know, pass through traffic. And, and as you know, it, it, is, it can be very congested. It's full of cars. So it's all about managing that. It's, it's about having it be walkable and friendly to a pedestrian, but at the same time still get traffic through it. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things you've noticed is there's so many driveways into, uh, into the different shopping centers, and that tends to back up traffic. And so part, things are what they're looking at is how they can redo the lanes to maybe improve the flow. Mm -hmm. And also, everyone loves traffic uh, light synchronization because sometimes, you know, that doesn't, works against traffic flow. So they're, one of the plans is to work with Caltrans to try to get that better synchronized. Right. I know I, for me personally, like I use Western Ave all the time, but I, I always enjoy it at about like seven o'clock at night. It's just, you really appreciate that street. There's a lot there. And especially, you know, sometimes just for me, like, you know, always going over the switch backs, it's a nice, like just straight shot to kind of get to the other side of the city. And there's just, a, if there's so much there and there's a lot of potential, you feel the potential of that street. You yeah, know? there definitely is. And, and I think uh, another thing that, that we're looking at too is, is the different, um, methods of mobility, if you will. You have the car, you have the pedestrian, but then it also bring in the transit and which is there, but I think it, you know, one of the things that could probably be helpful to, to, to Western is to uh, perhaps work with MTA and even P, you know, uh, PV Transit to perhaps add a line or extend a line that would go up and down th that corridor. And then also introducing bike lanes. So you have, you know, different users of the of of that public space of that uh, of of that right of way, and uh, and one of the things that what we're looking at is is you know looking at the feasibility of of installing bike lanes, and you know one of the last things we would obviously want to do is take away any lanes of traffic for mm -hmm. for vehicles, uh, but I think given the size of the width of, of the corridor, I think it's it's a, a, there's sufficient space to to accommodate. Your 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 lanes of traffic, your uh, your bike lanes, and still have enough room in the middle to improve the medians as well. Right. So, are you getting feedback for people that do bike that they would be on Western Ave more and take advantage of that if it, it felt that well, there was room for, room for them? Well, I think you know, uh, first the first reaction is like, well, do you want to add bikes to an already congested um, highway? But I think when when they see how it could work and how it does work in other places. Um, I think you know lights go on like oh that would be cool if you could actually write mm -hmm. get from one place to to, to another through this corridor right. and stop and, and and you know get something to eat or something mm -hmm. so that's what the plan is to try to get as many things amenities as possible right. um, but I mean talking about improvements I mean I think the big picture is what we're looking at is to try to see what we can do <clears throat> with the public the public realm in other words the public the the the, the street itself 
you know, better lighting, better landscaping, street furniture, things that just are modern looking and, and, and can really kind of uh, fix up the place. You know, exactly. it just looks, looks modern and nice. And we think that if we have a plan that has an, uh, that idea, we can get grants to get some of those things uh, in. Uh, Caltrans, we can work with Caltrans. And we think that if we improve the public infrastructure, then the private owners will they'll fix up their places mm -hmm. uh, because you know they, they, a lot of those um, buildings have been there for decades and they need some modernization right. as well. It sounds like a, it sounds like a, you know very exciting improvements and mm -hmm. but from your point of view as a program a project director what are the biggest challenges you're dealing with and, and certainly costs that will be involved to give Western have a facelift like that? Yeah, it, no, obviously there there is cost, and I think that's one of the things that that has come up with with uh, with the working group and, and with the public. We heard we heard a lot of that uh, from the uh, workshops that that we that we held, and uh, and ultimately I think what we want to do is is to try to get this a vision plan in place and use that as as a catapult to then apply for grants to actually implement these mm -hmm. improvements. So ultimately it would be little to no cost to the city uh, to actually make these improvements because you know we would have this plan in place to then say hey um, you know Mr. and Mrs. Uh, grant uh, provider we're, you know we're, we're looking for a grant we have a, a plan in place uh, that that may meet the goals of uh, and uh, of, of your particular grant uh, and so I think with that that could be a, a real good catapult to, to be a good contender for future grants Great. Uh, so at and ultimately with to little or no cost to the city uh, but yeah, the biggest challenges too, I think, has just been you know trying to, to balance the the different stakeholders and, and their interests, and uh, and and I think like like Joel says, I think well you know focusing on on the on the public realm, you know I think ultimately it'll be it'll it'll have a ripple effect, and you you have these improvements in the public in the public streets, and then I think the, the private party will. Right, uh, and it's also the challenge, I mean, here, say everyone in RPV is on board, elected officials and all that, mm -hmm. but then you have, you know, half of the street sort of, we over, the city oversees, and then you've mm -hmm. got the city of LA side. Are you getting good feedback that they're on board as well, or where are you in that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. I think uh, Councilman uh, Joe Buschiano has been really, uh, uh, really taken to the forefront and, uh, and has his staff working with us, and they've, they've really gone, uh, you know, they are part of the working group as well. And so we've had uh, some of their, his staff members part of this whole working group. And so they've you know, been put, uh, providing input. And, uh, and the partnership, I think, has, has worked because I think when you and I, or as Joel and myself, as, 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 as planners, we look at, 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 at the street, we could see the borders. But the general public, the general public doesn't see the border. Right. You know, they look at that as one cohesive street. And so that's why we, we reached out to, to these other stakeholders, even from the other cities, to help us create this vision of more of a, of a uniform uh, corridor. Mm -hmm. Sounds really exciting. Give us a little bit um, in terms of the timeline, the next steps in the process. You mentioned you know, you've been working on this with the community. You've had your open houses or, and, and all that. So what happens now? Yeah, well, we, we've had this working group, like I said, made up of, of stakeholders have kind of guided the, the plan. And then we had a, a public workshop out on, out on Western Avenue at Peck Park where we invited the public to come in and give us their input, what they like, what they don't like about Western Avenue. And so based on all that, we now have a draft plan that we're ready to go to the Planning Commission with. So the next step is to go to the Planning Commission uh, and, and present our efforts thus far and get their feedback. I mean, the Planning Commissioners uh, are all very experienced uh, with different land use matters. So we're mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing what input they can give us on the plan. And then once it goes to the Planning Commission, we're going to present it to the City Council and get their input and, and hopefully get their approval of the plan. Okay. Um, because I think, I think having the City Council validate the plan is very important for us, like Eduardo says, to go to the next step to get grants. And the council meeting, I think, is in June, and then it's the May 28th Planning Commission. Are those May, the dates? That's correct. That's correct. May 28th, uh, it's going to the Planning Commission, and then June 18th, to the city council. So if all goes well and everybody gives their stamp of approval, then mm -hmm. how does this get implemented? Then what happens in terms of the vision plan? Like what, what to, to see that go forward? Well, I, I think what it's, what, what's really going to need to, to happen is, is for us to really monitor some of the grant opportunities and, uh, you know, working with, with our public works department, working with Caltrans to see if there are even small improvements that we could start to implement that could be of low cost to the city. Uh, always be cognizant of, of, of that. 
uh, and then uh, just monitor the, the grants that are out there for, for implementing certain aspects of that plan. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, we'll lead into phase two of the, of the vision plan, which is actually developing design guidelines. Uh, and so there is a grant opportunity uh, that we are applying for mm -hmm. uh, with SCAG again. Okay. And, uh, and, what, and that, that application is due at the end of the month. And so we will be applying for some funding uh, in partnership with the City of LA and Joe Buscano's office uh, to apply for this grant. And so we presumably, our, our, our goal is to, uh, as a result of the grant, would be to have design guidelines uh, with regards to uh, landscaping, uh, appropriate landscaping for the, for the corridor, uh, perhaps some uh, wayfinding signage, uh, street furniture, and come up with, with a cohesive uh, design guidelines for both cities to implement. All right. I know my hometown back east, they just simply put in sort of antique light, street lighting, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. It gave a completely different mm -hmm. feel, like certain mm -hmm. things like that, those kinds of elements. Yeah, I mean, we through this process of developing the plan, you know, the consultant has presented all kinds of images from right. different cities, uh, different, and California and the nation. Oh, you're right, where, where just the lighting, the type it's of landscaping, amazing. what it does in terms of turning the feel of a place. And, and, it inspi and we hope that that's what's gonna happen here, to inspire somebody else to do, to do more. For example, the terraces, we know recently changed hands, the shopping center. Mm -hmm. And so we've already discussed it with the new owners and they have some ideas to do some short-term improvements uh, for the center, but they also have long-term plans. And if they know that, hey, the cities, the, both cities are, are investing into this area to improve it, then they well, that's a positive thing for them to invest in their, improving right. their property. Mm -hmm. And that's the message we're trying to send. So get that pride and ownership feeling right. yeah, yeah, to no, start exactly. to really perpetuate. Right. No, e exactly. And I think, you know, really what we're trying to do is, I mean, the city doesn't have, you know, this pot of money sitting around and just throw into Western Avenue. Right. Uh, there's a lot of, it's, it's competitive in terms of other projects. And, and so we're trying to do this as best we can with other money, outside monies through grants. And we're really trying to fo follow, follow the model of the, of the Coast Vision Plan, where it, the, for the Coast, a plan was done, and then we were used to sort of get almost a million dollars worth of grants. And so that's why we've learned that to, to be competitive to get a grant, you've got to get a, a city council. You have to have a plan. Yeah. It's got to be endorsed by your city council, and you got to have a partnership. And we think we have that here, or that's what we're trying to get here with a partnership with LA and a plan approved by the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, earlier in our conversation, you talked about because you're getting feedback from the community, you know, what they like now about Western Ave, what works and what doesn't work. And I'm just, I just know of some things you can throw out the things that people are saying, you know, this doesn't work anymore with Western mm -hmm. Ave. There's some things that have surfaced can, that you're hearing con, kind of constant complaints about. I don't well, I, I think I think one of the biggest complaints is obviously traffic and congestion. Right. But uh, I think that could also be used as a positive as well. Um, but it's just a matter of, of trying to, to move that quantity of traffic through in, in a in a in a in a better manner. And uh, but yeah, I think that's really been I think the the, it's really the, about the that. biggest uh, issue amongst. And then, but in terms of the on the plus side, what are people saying? You know, this is what we really appreciate about Western Ave. What kinds of feedback are you getting there? No, I think the the, the positive what people like is that there are a variety mm -hmm. of retail. You know, there's markets and and all the needs that are very close. And I think that we hear that you know people would walk. To, the, to those markets and to those retail needs if they could, if it was you know, a uh, nicer area, you know, nicer right. in terms of landscaping and things like that. Uh, and then you hear stuff like, yeah, it'd be nice to have new landscaping, but at the same time, we don't want the landscaping to block our views. Uh, the wall, there's a wall there along a, a good part of it that's dated. And it's so something we've heard a lot about doing something about that wall, either building a new wall or screening that wall. So, so I think, you know, everyone, uh, realizes that they like Western Avenue, it's, it's, it's vital, it's happening, but it can use some improvement. All right. I'm, I'm curious what you both think in terms of, obviously just by using the word improvement, you know there has, should be a benefit, mm -hmm. but just what you see as how the community at large really will benefit if you know, a vision plan is implemented to improve Western Avenue, what, what do you think will be really obvious? And, and also sort of the economic benefits, I would assume, just because of you know, mm -hmm. making it more attractive to come and shop. Right. Yeah, it, there, there definitely be an economic uh, uh, plus for for the city, but I think for the community at large, I think the just improving the accessibility of of Western Avenue, and then you know providing Western Avenue with some TLC, and uh, I think it'll it'll create more more pride in in our communities, 
and uh, that's always good. And and I think with with that comes pride of ownership with with some of these uh, business owners, and you know they're hopefully you know uh, redevelop their properties or you know, make make them look nicer. And so I think those those are, those are going to be the things that that the community is going to benefit from, is is mm -hmm. a nicer looking corridor. Hopefully, you know the traffic can 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 be managed, uh, but you know you also have uh, a variety of, of other means to get around Western Avenue. Hopefully, right. I think you want to add in terms of improvements you see, and just sort of again the overall goals, which is to like you know help with mobility and all of that. Well, you know the overall goal. I mean, our de our department. I mean, our role is to really is to um, improve the quality of life. You know, because people live here, and so in planning, we try to come up. You know, look forward. What we what can we do? to do that, and as Eduardo says, it's all about really um, f making that community feel like more proud of that, of that area they live mm -hmm. in, and, and also by, I think by um, getting private property owners to maybe improve their properties, you'll make, see a, even more different kinds of uh, retail going in there, uh, and, and just helping out the overall mix. I'm always I'm always looking for more retail, yeah. <laughs> more shopping of course. opportunities. Of course. Um, before we sort of start wrapping up, anything else that comes to mind that you want to you know, really let the, our our residents know and the community know? But I'm again I want to know. You seem optimistic. You seem excited. I mean, are you optimistic mm -hmm. that we will? You know, we always sometimes I think we get a look at a community and think, wow, look at the potential. And we mm -hmm. talk about it, but then nobody sort of ever lands the plane. Are you feeling this is going to happen? Are you optimistic? No, I, I I'm very optimistic about it. the 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 only, the only caveat to that is 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 the time frame in which this is implemented. Um, unfortunately, you know, we can't give you uh, a, a a particular date by which this plan is going to be implemented, and, and ultimately, you know, it'll be done in two years. Unfortunately, planning is not like that. It's, you know, there's a lot of variables involved in in terms of how things get implemented, but. You know, if if as planners we tend to stick it stick it out, to, you know, in, for the long run, and I think in the long run, you'll start to see some changes develop over course of time, and uh, nothing is is ever really instant, uh, as as we like to think and want, like to want want to have happen. Uh, but I think having this vision in place and sticking it out over the long term. Uh, you're going to see a, a, a Western Avenue that's totally different. Yeah, that sounds great. How about? Oh you? yeah, no, totally optimistic, and, and this is why. I mean, I I've seen other attempts to try to help Western Avenue, and I know because he's been here for twenty over twenty five years with this and, city. No, and, and it's always <laughs> been an, a, a, a you know an interest of me because I mean we deal with residential all the time. It's kind of nice to also deal with commercial and try to help commercial. So I've been involved in past efforts and, and they haven't been successful because there was there were always um, LA was not at the table. It was you know us trying to do something and and, and, and you just really can't without right. a partnership. And what really inspires me here is the city of LA's commitment to this plan. I mean uh, the councilman Asked for presentation, we went to his office and, and we and we gave him a presentation of what we're doing. He was completely uh, thrilled by what we're doing. He he supported it. His, his office has been very involved, and so I think you know they're, and like they're involved with the next set of grants. And so I think that's the key that I see that this time is that we have a, a partner that that's going to go to the table with us to get grants and 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 get some things done through through Caltrans and and whatever other means we need to do to get this plan implemented. Okay. Well, as you get to the next phase and the next phase, and hopefully you get all your approvals you'll need here in this city, we'll bring you back in and you can just keep continuing to Definitely. update the community. And I also want to add that on the city website, you have a fantastic PowerPoint that your team put together that really gives a good picture of what Western Ave issues are, what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so I want to let our viewers know if they go to the city website, which is Palace Verdes slash RPV, and then you got to click on resident, and then you see up, you see all the latest and current mm -hmm. topics, and then Western Avenue falls there. Just mm -hmm. click on that, and it really kind of you know spells it all out. I don't know if you have any other way. You want residents to kind of get up to speed on what's going on. The website's probably the best. Yeah, the website is definitely the best. Uh, uh, besides the going through the resident link, you can actually go by city okay. department. Okay. Um, uh, we have in our community development department, specifically in our planning page, we have the uh, Western Avenue Vision Plan uh, uh, link there. Uh, you can also sign up uh, and be part of the listserv so you can get some uh, updates and notifications of any future uh, meetings that we're going to be holding or any workshops that will be held in the future. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Having you both here from city planning is always a, is great, keeping us up to date, and uh, we'll have you back. And as we wrap it up here, anything else you want to add? We're 
But I think we kind of covered it, and people know that there are definitely you guys are working on Western Avenue. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is great. I mean, if, if people can go out there, drive it, walk it, and, and get us their input, that would be mm -hmm. wonderful. All right. Mm -hmm. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. Thank you, Joel and Eduardo. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. We'll see you next time.